Now, as the mace sergeant at Tucker's Hall in Exeter, David Johnson can normally be seen at civic ceremonies carrying the symbol of the authority of the crown and the house, his mace. But now he's been given a new role with the title of Beadle. What exactly does that mean and what happens to his existing job? Certainly the thought's going through my head at the moment. Davy is on the line. Afternoon, Davy. Good afternoon to you. I ver- very rarely look at something and say, what's that all about? I've, n- I've never, well, I just told you, know nothing about your job. So let's let's start with the role of Mace Sergeant. What exactly okay. do you do? So the Mace Sergeant, uh, Pippa, is uh, basically the Lord's, Lord Mayor's bodyguard, the Lord Mayor of Exeter. And uh, the Mace Sergeant works to him and we protect him. We've got uh, four to seven kilos of silver on our shoulder which uh, originally would have simply just been a weapon to defend the Lord Mayor with, or Mayor in those days. Mm. Um, Exeter is one of the oldest mayoralities in the kingdom, but it's one of the newest Lord Mayoralities because that was an honour granted by the Queen in 2002 on her 50th uh, year on the throne. So basically, I'm a, I'm a bodyguard during ceremonial occasions for the Lord Mayor, but we also act as tour guides for the Guildhall, um, introducing the general public to the amazing building that it is. Oh, what an interesting job. Is it a full-time job then for you? No, neither of my jobs are full-time. And uh, there is a full-time May sergeant. He's the senior May sergeant. And he, for that, um, is given the honour of carrying a sword given to the city in 1497 by King Henry the Seventh when he visited here to put down a rebellion by a pretender called Perkin Warbeck. And that he also gave us his hat that day, and we have uh, an amazing, I don't know, homage, I suppose is the best word, to the original hat. We think it was just a cloth hat, but we've now got this amazing hat that's made of gold wire and, uh, and velvet and things like that, which anyone in Exeter will see those on parade uh, sure. during days like Remembrance Sunday. Lama's Fair, things like that. It's been pimped by the sound of it. <laughs> it has been significantly added to. That is certainly <laughs> true. And so a May sergeant will uh, be essentially, you know, in, in position, in post uh, for, for any city or, or uh, uh, um, whatever is that, that has a mayor. Is that the case? It's, it's, always not, a mayor it's not necessarily the case. Okay. Um, there are very few cities which have a history as old as Exeter. Mm. Um, you can tell that I'm not a local man. I <laughs> I came here for all the best reasons. I married an Exeter girl. Um, one we'll of the allow you few then. people who I subsequently <laughs> discover was born in Devon, who right. still lives here. And uh, so the other May sergeants, I believe, are all uh, residents of Exeter and, and were born here. And between us, we perform these duties uh, on a rota basis, basically. And, and generally, uh, do May surgeons come from, from a service background? Well, in my case, it is a service background. And mm-hmm. there are another two who have uh, service backgrounds and the senior May sergeant also. Um, but it's not necessary. And uh, one of the things that I would like to talk to you about, uh, Pippa, as we get on, is that we have a need for some volunteers to come and assist us in the Tucker's Hall rather than the Guild Hall. Mm-hmm. And as I've said in the, the thing that I've prepared is that Everything is enthusiasm, loyalty and a sense of humour because everything else can be learned on the job regardless of what your previous life experience is. So a passion, a real passion for, I guess, history and uh, and for the local area is important. Well, it is. I mean, the Exeter Guildhall is quite phenomenal. If you think that there was a Roman building there 2,000 years ago, you're standing on top of a Roman building. And on the outside wall, it says... 8080 to 1980 and I had a Dublin tourist one day who came back in and said have a couple of numbers fallen off that sign Mm -hmm. and I said no actually this city is from 8080 I actually personally believe it could be earlier than that but Mm -hmm. uh, that's what's written on the outside of the guild hall so Mm -hmm. we'll go with that And, and that building just to give you some idea of its authenticity the Exeter guild hall was built in the same uh year as Notre Dame in Paris. Goodness, really? Yes. Oh, it puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Let's have a chat, uh, Davy, about the new post of sure. Beadle. So this is alongside May Sergeant. It is. And it's really it's really interesting because after 400 years, um, two of Exeter's great halls have become reunited. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we 
celebrated the 400th anniversary of us um, being given permission from the King, James I, to incorporate the wool trades of Exeter and to become an independent organisation. Prior to that, we had been in the Guildhall. Um, sadly, as far as the members of this incorporation were concerned, the weavers, the fullers and the shearmen, um, they felt that they were paying rather too much tax. And so they appealed to the King. And after a period of time, the King relieved them of that burden. I'm sure they still continued to pay tax to the city, but it wasn't anything like as much as when they were fully under its control. So we celebrated that 400th anniversary, um, as I say, two weeks ago on Monday. And uh, it, it meant that they then, at that point, in addition to being able to keep a little bit more of the money for themselves, that they could begin to impose quality control on the product. And the product was all the cloth that Exeter made. And this cloth should never be underestimated. Seven out of every ten men who worked in this city worked in the cloth trade. And that cloth made this the third richest city in the kingdom. So it was a really important thing. And in addition to the folks who lived and worked in Exeter, every single person in Devon had three sheep in terms of numbers. And we had the largest county flock of any English county. So this was, can you imagine, it, it'd be a bit like living in Cupertino and working for Apple <laughs> in its day. Yeah. And so the role of Beadle, how, how does this fit into it all, David? Okay, so the Beadle is an individual who's appointed by the incorporation, and that person is responsible for the daily running of the hall, um, which is on 4th Street in Exeter. Um, and we also run uh, the guided visits for the public, which are free. We also do interpretation of the building for our visitors. Um, in addition, we also take part in the Lord Mayor's processions uh, for Remembrance Day and, and Lammas Fair and things of that nature. And so it's my function to run the building on a day-to-day -day basis, admit and welcome visitors, and also to assist with the ceremonial side when it's necessary. How unusual is it to, to have uh, anyone who has the job of Beadle and Mace Sergeant? Have you ever met anyone who's got both jobs? I have never met anyone who's got both jobs, no. but um, Exeter is an amazing place. And we have this wealth of history that other people simply don't have. You know, for example, when the Tucker's Hall was built, there was a young man, he was only 19 at the time, <clears throat> in the country that we now call Italy, and he was thinking about taking up painting. And 32 years later, he would paint the Mona Lisa. <laughs> so we have a history that most Exeter people don't really pay a lot of attention to. Um, and they're very welcome in both buildings to come along and see us and discover this amazing wealth of history that is, if not unique outside London, there aren't many places outside London that have it. It's so interesting. It's, uh, it's an, an historical, it's a ceremonial role, but it's really relevant now, isn't it? Because history is so important to us here. Could I give you an example of how I feel that this civil ceremony is so relevant? Mm, please do. So, in, I'm talking about the, the Guildhall now, but um, and actually Tuckers were involved too, but the, the, the synagogue, the local synagogue, had petrol poured into it and the interior was burned out. It took them about three years to get the building back to fully functional conditions and reopening. <clears throat> so the city of Exeter could have sent them a nice letter saying, well done, or they could have sent them perhaps a text message or a WhatsApp or Snapchat or whatever. But instead, what the city did uh, was everyone put on their best bib and tucker, the Lord Mayor, complete with all his mace sergeants and the sword and the hat, marched down the high street in the middle of the day, Everybody saw what was happening, all the aldermen um, and the representatives of the local community, including the police, fire and so on, walked behind. And the Jewish people at that point saw that a city cared about them in the 20s and really cared about them sufficient that they went and put their best bib and tucker on and got out on the high street at midday. No one could have been in any doubt whatsoever those people were included in the city. So I believe civil ceremony now has perhaps a, a bigger role to play than it ever has because so much of our communication is hidden i.e. in by email or or letter it's no longer a proclamation where a town crier goes and shouts it out where everyone hears it it's 
quite possible if you don't see these events to not understand that the city's in support of all the groups that live within it. Mm. Let's just hope it survives. That's the, you hear of so many job cuts. You wonder whether roles like this will be, um, you know, under threat in years to come. Well, I I note that because two of my uh, former uh, regimental colleagues are the uh, two top yeoman warders in the Tower of mm. London which of course also has a link with Exeter because that's the first castle that William the Conqueror built in England and then he, the second one he built was the one here. So it's just another instance of just massive history of this place. Mm. Um, I note that some of those jobs, um, historic royal palaces are saying that they may have to cut back on mm. numbers. So that would be a dreadful shame, but I am sure that once tourist numbers improve, that they'll be recruiting again. Oh, let's hope so. You're a walking encyclopedia, aren't you, Davy? <laughs> it's been so interesting yeah. to hear all about the fact that clearly it's a real passion for you. You mentioned volunteers. What exactly are you hoping for those people to be doing? OK, so in, in terms of the Tucker's Hall, it's my job to support the volunteers and make sure that the place is ready and fit for the public to come in and enjoy. We've got lots of interactive displays for kids. We've got uh, amazing history and we've got one of the most beautiful medieval halls in the world, I would say, without fear of contradiction. So the volunteers are the people who actually meet the public. They are the face of Tucker's Hall. I will be here if I need to be engaged. I will. But mostly my job is to make sure that they, who are really in the front line, have the support they need. And we would dearly love um, Exeter people. They don't need to have been born in Exeter. You can tell that I wasn't. Um, but people who have an enthusiasm for the history of Exeter, please come and see us. Um, come for a free visit. Have a talk with us. Let us know that you're interested, perhaps, in becoming a volunteer here. And we would, uh, you know, move it forward based on whether you like us. Sounds good. Tucker's Hall is the place to call, then? Tucker's Hall is the place to call. That Fabulous. sounds fantastic. <laughs> i maybe make a jingle out of that later. We ought to, really, yes. Yeah. It's on 144th Street, and it's been here next year for 550 years, so I think mm -hmm. most people know where it is. Um, at the moment, uh, we have COVID-19 restrictions in place, but until the end of September, we're open on um, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturday mornings between the hours of 10.30 and 1. And we will be participating in additional opening for the Exeter Heritage Open Days. Well, you've opened my eyes today, Davy. It's really enlightening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a little bit about the history. It's tip of the iceberg, I know. If people want to find out more, get in touch uh, with uh, the team at Tucker's Hall. And thank you for joining us. Good luck no, with the, uh, the new role, the extra new role. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Cheerio.